Hello everyone, and it's a cold day here on This Hero Chopping Block, starring Drow Ranger. Drow Ranger is a ranged agility hero tagged carry, disabler, and pusher. This wintry archeress lands her shots with grace and accuracy to put foes down before they can even reach her. Let's check out the tricks of her trade. Her first ability is called Frost Arrows. Drow fires arrows covered with a freezing effect, inflicting enemies with a slow. FYI, the slow has a shorter duration on heroes than creeps, and it is also recommended to play on quick cast as having to manually target enemies could result in death. For her second ability, she has Gust. Drow blows a chilling wind in an arc, knocking back enemies and silencing them. FYI, it can push enemies over impassable terrain, and if an enemy stands directly on Drow, no knockback occurs due to the formula for the knockback. Drow possesses, for her third ability, Precision Aura. It adds bonus damage to the physical attack of ranged heroes and creep units based on Drow's own agility. FYI, the effect is global, and creeps are affected for 30 seconds when the ability is actually toggled to active. Her fourth and final ability is a passive ultimate called Marksmanship that grants Drow a bonus to her agility as long as she remains 400 units away from enemy heroes. FYI, with Aghanim Scepter, her attacks will splinter on the primary target and hit nearby units for reduced damage. These splintered projectiles cannot target courier, buildings, or wards, but they can still be used as primary targets. They also ignore hidden slash stealthed heroes. Also, you can tell that the aura is active based on a blue shimmering aura surrounding Drow Ranger. Alright, here we go with me touching another carry. Are you cringing yet? There's something I must admit. Drow is the first time I have switched to a quick cast or um, I guess it's more of an auto casting system. I have to say it was like well, well worth it. Because after I did it, and I, you know, I, I played my match, which obviously wasn't this match, but, um, this, this match might have been, like, maybe my, this match was probably my 12th match that I played, um, on Drow, where I was already, I was now used to the quick casting system, but once I started playing with it, I went back to some, to previous heroes and tried it with them, and oh my god it makes the fucking difference and i i implore everybody to at least try to learn it at some point it, it actually makes a difference i initially was scared to do it you know i was more used to um orb walking as the term is so called but i realized that orb walking doesn't give you that that reaction time that you're going to need on you know a lot of heroes especially agility heroes who rely on their like right click and and you know, their abilities are usually situational, and you gotta use them, like, at the minute the situation pops up, you gotta use them right away. You can't, like, orb walk it and, and, you know, hope for the best. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, as normal for me when playing the carry, the first few games were really rough, but with Drow, I got the hang of it quicker than uh, previous carry heroes I had played, such as Clinks. Clinks I had the hardest time with. Um, and I want to say that's, that's mainly because I was orb walking with him, like, with, when it came to his abilities, um, especially where fire arrows was concerned, you know, the orb walking for that is not too good, um, and just, you know, my reaction time does not really lend itself to playing a carry properly, uh, but, you know, that's, that's no, that's no shade on the hero itself, that's just me personally. Um, I picked up Drow quicker than I had picked up the previous carries I've tried so far. And um, unlike them, I feel like mistakes on her are not as forgiving due to her lack of built-in escapes. Which is, it, it's really funny because while I picked her up easily, I I saw that you could easily be punished. If, if you overextend, if you, you know, aren't looking at your map you get punished easily whereas somebody like clinks for example you know if you're playing him and you you forget to look at your map or you overextend you have skeleton walk you can you know stealth and get the fuck out with her you don't have that option it it's if you go in you go in there's there's no if ands or buts about it um her primary form of harass slash burst comes from 
her frost arrows. Before I learned quick cast, I always wondered um, how other drows rained cold death on someone. Like, I would play matches on the um, previous characters I've played, heroes that I've played. I would see a draw ranger on my team, and I just noticed that they're raining frost arrows, raining frost arrows. And like I said, this was before I switched over to the uh, quick cast system. So, you know, I, as soon as I started playing her, I'm like, how do they do this? Like, I'm tr like, you know, trying to get the ability to work, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm shooting like one arrow at a time. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. And then I switched over to quick cast, and it's like, oh, this is how they do it. Oh my god. It increases your DPS by so much. I'm just saying. Um, the slow alone on frost arrows is great to catch runaways, deter an attempting ganker, or even help kill secure. By showering an enemy with it, you're constantly refreshing the slow buff and chunking their health even before your attack speed gets up there. Early game, it's, kind, it's more of a utility skill, and then come late game, well, okay. Well, I want to say early game, it's more of a... It's half and half damage utility. But late game, once your attack speed gets up there, you're just you're just raining it on them. That damage that you're doing is just top shelf delicious. Um, once your agility gets up there and your attack speed is at that, that right place where you can just pelt all day and watch your enemy just melt. Just melt. Um, uh, weaving it between autos ensures you don't just burn through mana, but you can still take an enemy down. Which is more of an early game problem, admittedly. You know, if you're just kind of spamming it early game and you don't have your... Um, you don't really need any mana regen heavy items. Just enough that early game you won't run into a mana problem. You'll be A-OK. -okay. Um... Her next ability is her only quote-unquote defensive skill. Like, I, I want to put that out there. It's her only quote-unquote defensive skill. If you've ever played Sylvanas from HOTS or Heroes of the Storm, you will know that she has a similar sort of sort of play style where her Banshee Whale or something, I, I forget the exact name of the skill, but she basically sends out these waves of, like, demon things, and she can teleport to them once she casts the skill again. But, you know, you have to do it within the, the duration of the skill, which is like two seconds roughly or something. Um, and a lot of people have a habit of, like, using it on creep waves, and then when they get rotated upon, they have no escape. Because that's her only form of, like, defense. She can use it, you know, to escape, get behind a wall really quickly. Because it can go through walls. Gust is kind of in that same place, except that, it it, you know, you don't get to teleport to it upon activation. No, it knocks back and it silences so if you're a gank is about to happen you want to gust the enemy and run away as you know whatever movement speed you have put it to fucking good use um gust has several other uses that work in drow's favor and to an extent for her team the first thing that comes to mind should be like i said the knockback not only is it useful for getting an enemy melee hero off of you, but it could be used to push the enemy team into an unfavorable position for them. However, fucking up that tactic right there could get a team member killed or worse, cause someone's ult or initiation to fail. The last thing you want to do is gust an enemy and here comes your, uh, your carry or somebody who needs, you know, their ult takes time to kind of, like, hit. And you basically just gusted the enemy right out of it and, you know, let them walk away scot-free. Like, for example, Bloodseeker. If he's coming up to do his blood right and you gust the enemy right out of his blood right, right as it activates, there goes all that damage plus another silence that, you know, uh, plus a silence that you could have chained into with your gust had you waited. Um, the second component um, is the silence, which is powerful. This ties into the push enemies into the tight spot idea. By silencing them, you, temporar you temporarily prevent escapes or um, ruin initiation attempts on an ally. Knocking back plus silencing plus frost arrows um, spam should equal a dead enemy or enemies if your team is on point. But again, you're in thinking of that combo. You have to be working with your support, or at least, you know, your jungler. You want you have to be able to position yourself behind an enemy, gust them forward towards your allies, or say, uh, say an axe 
is about to like blink onto somebody and like taunt them or something, you get, you can gust away the axe and hopefully your teammate can get has enough HP or you know durability to survive and get away before the axe can initiate on them again. Uh, moving on to her third ability, Precision Aura. Uh, it's helpful for timing, or rather, getting last hit, uh, making last hits easier. The active activation of it helps push lanes, especially if there is a catapult. And after a team fight in which you manage to down several enemy heroes, um, you you shouldn't be afraid to jump back into a lane and and push. Early game, it's very potent. Uh, it's a it's a very potent tool if your team doesn't have. Uh, much pushing power. That's where a, a, a good chunk of their pushing power will come from. Will be for from you. So you got to make sure you um, are able to rotate back into lane and help uh, push. Also, um, if your team runs another ranged uh, hero such as sniper, I know sniper is often played mid. Um, he is a great choice to pair with Jaw Ranger because of her aura. It will increase his um, his ranged damage. Uh, lastly, uh, last in her kit come her. Lastly, blah blah. blah I'm like brain farting everywhere. Um, seriously, y'all, the match that's on screen right now is pro is was like you guys don't understand how orgasmic that match was for me. Like, I might have been doing like I was doing like it was really rough for me in the beginning in, of, the, of the match that you're watching right now, but when it came together, oh my god, it came together fucking well. I'm just I'm just saying. So mind me if I'm like brain fighting because I'm just remembering and replaying that match in my head. But um, moving on to her final ability, which really brings her kit together, um, and you can realize why she has kind of no room for escapes in her natural abilities is her marksmanship. As long as you're rolling with a dragon lance, which I highly recommend you build dragon lance as your first or second item. Um, I would build it first and then follow it up with an escape item, like uh, phase boots. Well, you should build your boot next, in all honesty. Um, so I would follow it up with like a phase boots or uh, a power tread. Uh, those, were, those are like the most likely options for me, personally. But... Um, as long as you're running with a dragon lance and some kind of escape, like I said, uh, like blink. Oh, blink dagger is another one, but blink dagger is more of a. Uh, it's more of a. We're having really good farm, or a shadow. Bl a shadow blade would be a lot easier to get. I feel. Uh, enemies will have a hard. Will be hard pressed to get within your 400 unit limit because your ult has a four. Like any hero that comes within 400 units of you, cancel out your ult. So you gotta make sure that, that's why Dragonlance is prop, like, to play Draw Ranger without Dragonlance is to play dangerously. That's how I see it. Like, I'm not saying it's a mandatory item on her, I'm just saying it makes playing her a lot easier and, personally for me, a lot more effective. You can play her without it, that's for sure, but you're, you know, there's a danger that comes with that, so you have to be packing enough escapes to... You know, not just Blink Dagger, because if you get hit, Blink Dagger goes on cooldown. So, you want to pack Blink... Like, if you're... You don't want to slot nothing but escapes, obviously, but, you know... If you're, if you're going to forego the Dragonlance, make sure that you have, you know, enough escape items to get you out of dodge. In, in case something very serious and bad happens. But, um... The amount of damage that this ability adds to Drow allows her to rip up anyone not built to tank or lacking mobility. This is the sole reason it is not recommended she rotates lanes until at least level 6. Rotating before that is possible, it is done, but you become, as Draw Ranger, you become so, so much more effective once you get your ult. And that is because the, the amount of damage that it adds, you know, when you position yourself correctly and the enemy can't get out of your range, um... And, and remember, Drow has a big range. I think she has like a 575 range, I think. Um, I could be wrong. But with a huge range like that, and you position yourself in a way that the enemy is not out of your range even when they're trying to escape, you are chunking them for some serious damage once you have that alt there. But now that we, you know... Now that we've gone over all that in her kit a bit, let's talk about the laning phase in depth. Uh, starting with offlane, 
Drowlax escapes in durability, which would make her nothing but feed to the enemy carry and support. Uh, these two facts also means that she'd be easily rotated upon and up unable to farm under tower because of the way that um, off lane is set up. You you can't an off as the as the off laner, you cannot farm under your tower. You can only okay. I don't want to say you cannot farm under your tower, but you you it's so easy to get overextended in off lane and the point. You know, most off laners are durable. You know, they can handle a, a, a you know an early game gank or two. But Drow Ranger would not be able to. She wouldn't possess the ability. She wouldn't like it'd be nice. You have to solo farm, yeah. But you know, you're going two v one. Drow is a one v one character. She has no AOEs unless you grab your agonims. Uh, moving down to mid lane, this is indeed a possible lane for Drow to win. Her frost arrows and gust, albeit a bit mana costly early, can poke, harass, and shut down the enemy mid laner from acquiring farm. She can last hit safely from high ground, and with access to rune control, she can better rotate to other lanes to assist in ganks via gust and in conjunction with the team's jungler. Um, however, I personally do not advise running her mid lane unless A, you have a durable uh, melee carry, or B, the enemy mid is melee. Or C, you're confident in being the team's backup carry and have a nuker in another lane. I say this because the one... No, no, I think it's more like three games. The three games that I managed to play um, Drow, I had to mid, which admittedly I was shocked by. I was like, can Drow Ranger even mid? And to my surprise, yeah. The... The ability to shut down the enemy mid laner means you're shutting down the other team's nuker, effectively. Especially if that person, if that other mid laner is like a storm spirit or a blood seeker, somebody who's melee and has to take time. They, you know, they don't have a way of like physically engaging on you. I mean, blood seeker has his blood right, but you know, point point being, somebody who has kind of a little bit of trouble initiating on you, you can farm from high ground and not even care, not even worry. You just, you keep farming, you keep shooting, you disappear from lane, you reappear. That's how Drow Ranger works. She ambushes and she moves on with her life. And that is a very important aspect to playing Drow Ranger. Um, once you hit 6 and you're playing in mid lane and you rotate, people should be worried. And the reason I said that, um, unless you ha don't play her mid, unless you have a, a strong uh, melee carry, is because she pairs really well with somebody like a like an anti mage or uh, really that's the only one that comes to mind for me. You know, you you got an anti mage in your team. He's your melee carry. He's very durable in my opinion. I think he's a very stable um, melee carry. So you can run Drow Ranger mid and not worry about that because he has a blink. So that even if you go down, your team still has a carry. You might still need, and, and this plays into the uh, point B of needing a nuker. So somebody who has a strong hit ability. So your support could easily be your team's nuker, depending on who that support is. Or even sometimes an offlaner might possess that, or even your jungler. Dep it all depends on your team composition. Um, you just want to make sure that you don't, you want to make sure that your team has enough CC in it to help you survive because Drow does not bring her own CC except for her frost arrows. Just keep that in mind. Um, next up should be the, like the no-brainer. This is where Drow shines. The safe lane. Drow is a carry so this is her natural lane. Um, here you want to be paired with a support who has hard CC like a stun or a root. This way should the enemy offlaner attempt to jump you they'd be stopped in their tracks and heavily assaulted by your frost arrows gust combo. Drow can then start rotating once she hits 6 and acquires her marksmanship due to the major boost the DPS it provides. Marksmanship is the core of her kit. You will see every guide that you read about Drow Ranger will say get that ult. Every opportunity you get, get that ult. Get that level tone. Like I noticed I just started, you know, using it more, get that level tome, that tome that gives you that extra boost of experience, get it every time it is available. 
get that ult as soon as possible because once that ult is maxed out, people will run from you. Well, well, try. They'll probably get gusted in the process, but try. <laughs> you know. So, moving on from lanes um, to item recommendations, let's talk about boots. I say power treads is a nice staple choice. Like you will hear me say, you know, grab one in doubt, grab power treads. That's basically what that boils down to for me. Uh, attack speed, move speed, and the ability to buff your HP, mana regen, or attack power is great depending on your need. After a fight, switch over to strength treads. Get that nice chunk of HP regen. Oh, your mana is a little low. Go ahead and switch to intelligence treads. Oh, you're about to go into a team fight? Boom! Hit agility treads. Power treads is a really nice and staple, safe choice if you're not sure what kind of boot you should be leaning towards. Um, another uh, good boot choice is Tranquils. Hear me out on this one. The move speed can help you with going from lane to lane, and the HP regen would allow for quick after gank healing. The huge HP regen you get from that is really good. It's a I say only get it if you know you're going to be rotating a lot. The uh, The movement speed is really the core of that. Of course, you can always substitute Tranquils for Phase. I, phase is probably a safer option, um, just due to the fact that you can move through enemy... You can move through units and everything in case you get, like, body blocked by something. Um, uh, lastly, I would recommend Boots of Travel if you have strong farm. This would help tap into Drow's pushing potential and give her access to split pushing. Not to mention, it would free up a slot from TP scrolls and the added bonus of being able to port into team fights for easy cleanup. Um, it's also a very risky item because remember how your ultimate works. You don't want to teleport directly into the team fight, but you want to teleport close enough to it. And oftentimes you'll have a team fight happening on the enemy side of the map and there's really nothing you can teleport to except you know for creeps so you want to teleport to like a creep lane to creeps in an opposite lane or something and then you know make your way towards the team fight and pelt uh, not pelt but you know rip through people from beyond the 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 shadows the fog of war so it's a it's a risky option but it works out if you use it well um not to mention like I said, you know, freeing up an extra slot from TP scrolls. Um, another mentionable item is Dragonlance. I mentioned it earlier. Like I said, it's an almost must-have on Drow. Not only are the stats good, but the increased attack range ensures you obey the 400 unit distance on your ultimate and gives you the power to initiate before, your t before the enemy can react. Later, if you build it into a Hurricane Pike, whose active lets you knock back, Keeping enemies at, you know, it keeps enemies at bay. This means that should an enemy try to close in, in on you, you hurricane pike and you run the other fucking direction. That means you have two, you have two knockbacks. You would use your hurricane pike first, or maybe you would gust first to silence and then hurricane pike. Obviously, the problem comes in that when it's nighttime, you could knock the enemy back into, you know, the fog so you can't see them. But, you know, with a Bloodseeker on your team, and if the enemy's low enough, that is, that's not even a problem. It only becomes really a problem, like I said, if you are if you don't have somebody to give you vision on the enemy, and it's nighttime. But the combo still works. Gusting, Hurricane Pike, you have, that's an escape for you. That is, or you can just Hurricane Pike and walk away and still have your Gust ready to go in case they initiate on you again. It's, it's a combo thing. You gotta be mental about it. Um, there's something else I did want to mention. So after you build your Dragon Lance into Hurricane Pike, um, a personal favorite of mine that I always, always go for on Drow is Shadow Blade. Um, I don't ever get to make it to Silver Edge, but Shadow Blade is really good in that the invisibility and move speed bonus helps uh, recorrect bad positioning, and most importantly helps me get out of dodge should a gank or really powerful um, hero come at me. Uh, the last special mention goes to Satanic. I personally don't build it. I usually skip out on it because I don't need the extra life steal. I'm not tanking. I'm normally in the background, in the, in the back. So I don't ever really like tanking, you know, that. But Sa Satanic, um, 
really works because of Drow's huge bump in agility. Again, due to her ultimate, her attack power and speed means she can take advantage of the lifesteal granted by it. Finally, the staple Tango and Iron Branches to fill the gaps early game. Um, you should never be running without a Tango and some Iron Branches, I feel, early. Um, if you need that that extra healing or that little stat boost to get you going, you know, don't be afraid to, to jump into those. Mm. God, my throat is dry. Okay. So, closing out this section, uh, remember, Drow does best when out of reach of her enemies. So, try to position yourself in the back line with the team's caster. Also, be wary of CC heavy heroes, as due to your frailty and lack of escapes, you make quite the meal. In early game, it's fine if you're weak. Personally, I feel Drow is a mid to late carry. Now, roll that conclusion. Alright guys, so overall, Draw Ranger is a deadly archer who can demolish even the toughest of men if you leave her to her own devices. Possessing one of the highest agility stats in-game, she gives her enemies a cold death with volleys of frost arrows and a timely gust can ensure someone dies but no one around hears them. Drow brings with her high single target damage, powerful early game pushes, her range gives her excellent chase, and she buffs other ranged heroes. However, for all this cold beauty brings to the table, she will still struggle against aggressive enemy melee heroes, is highly stat dependent, has no actual escapes, and is super frail. For all it's worth, Drow is all about positioning and keeping enemies from ever touching you. The way Drow is set up makes her slightly less item dependent than other carries, but overextending without a support or form of escape could lead to early shutdown. After a team fight, take to a lane with a catapult, pop your aura, and push. Drow makes a great addition to any team with strong frontlines who can keep the heat and attention off of her. Join me next time as we play with the Guardian of the Flame. As always, if you enjoyed, please comment, like, and subscribe. And my highly experienced Dota 2 players, feel free to chime in with your Draw Ranger experience. Until next time, much love and may your games be fruitful.